Now that we have established a need for the complex numbers, we're going to formally define them. So we define a complex number as numbers that can be put in the form a plus bi, where a and b are real numbers, and i is the principal square root of negative 1. So this form is called the rectangular form of the complex number, and we talk about the real part of a complex number uh, designated by re of a plus bi is just the a. And you might think the imaginary part would then be bi, but it's not, it's just the b. So the imaginary part of a plus bi, im of a plus bi, is the b. So the imaginary part of a complex number is the real number, which is the coefficient of the i. So we can represent these numbers in a complex plane. So in a plane, we could take a, you know, we could get a complex plane going here like this. And let me just hide the grid. And we can find a point on here by, uh, you know, just graphing a, a point. Let's say that one there. And, for example, that might be, let's go ahead and put the grid back on. That might be the point, it's 2, 1 here but it's, it's actually 2 plus 1i, or here is 1 uh, plus 2i, and here is 3 minus 1i. So we, we can plot points that way. Now notice that the complex numbers do include the real numbers. If the second coordinate is 0, the, the, uh, the b is 0, the imaginary part is 0, then we just get real numbers, and those are plotted as we always plot real numbers on a number line, the horizontal one here. So there's the real number 2, and the real number 4, and the real number 3, and pi, the real number pi is in there somewhere, and then there's the real number 0, and negative 4, and so forth. Pure imaginary numbers, numbers of the form a real number times i, but not 0i, form the imaginary axis, except the origin is a real number, not an imaginary number. So that's the point i. That point is the real, the imaginary number 2i, negative 2i, negative 3i, and so forth. So actually all these numbers here on this axis really should have i's behind them if you did this correctly. Now I'm going to hide the grid just to kind of get that out of the way. Now another way we could identify a point, remember, is not only by rectangular coordinates, but also by um, measuring that distance, do it in polar coordinates. We can measure that distance and this angle, right? And so we can measure a point by basically a magnitude and an angle, like we did vectors, like the position vector here starting at the origin. So the distance from the origin, which I'll use r like we always do, is called the norm of that, or just the absolute value of that one, and we use like absolute value signs. So r is the norm, or absolute value, of a plus bi, and of course we know from the Pythagorean theorem, uh, everything we've done with vectors and what we've done with, with tri triangles all semester, is that that's going to be the square root of a squared plus b squared. And if this is our direction angle theta, okay, we know that we we know that the tangent of that theta is our x our, our y over x so that's b over a in this case and of course cosine of theta is a over r so a is r cosine of theta and similarly b is r sine theta so in rectangular form this could be written as r cosine theta plus r sine theta times i we also write this if we know the r and theta sometimes is r e to the i theta power. And I'll explain why this is a reasonable notation in the next video when we talk about, or in a couple of videos down the road, when we start talking about, um, about doing operations with these. But the number in front there is your magnitude or your, or your um, norm, absolute value, we could call it all those things. And the theta is your direction angle, which we call the modulus. Okay, so let's look at some examples here. Let me uh, let me just delete that example. I'm gonna hide this, and I'm gonna pull up some examples here. So here we have a couple of examples. Uh, the blue point is the point Z. The red, uh, the green one is the point 
uh, w. So z is uh, negative 1 minus 3i. So it's left 1 down 3, and that's negative 1 minus 3i. And points, the, the point w is c plus di, so it's negative 2 plus 1i. So let me go ahead and just say that's a uh, plus b i. Okay, and the w is c plus d i. And so those are cor those are um, controlled by these numbers in these boxes over here. Of course, I can change this, you know, to something else if I want. Okay, so let's just go back to this example here. So, uh, let's also find the magnitude and direction for this. So, remember the real part, of course, is, the, is just the negative 1. The imaginary part would be the negative 3 here for, the, for that one. For, for uh, W, the real part is the C, which is negative 2. Imaginary part is the 1 right there. Now, how about the R and the theta? Well, the R, or the magnitude, let's do it of W, is you square... The first one, square the second one, add them up in square roots. So let's just do it in, in, in our heads here. Negative 2 squared is 4. 1 squared is 1. 4 plus 1 is 5. So it's the square root of 5, or about 2.23607, which is that length right there, the distance W is from the origin. Similarly, we can find the, uh, the norm or magnitude of Z there, absolute value of Z, by uh, squaring each of these components. So... Uh, the real imaginary parts, a squared plus b squared and then square root. So that's negative 1 squared is 1, negative 3 squared is 9, 1 plus 9 is 10. So it's square root of 10 is this distance here, or approximately 3.16228. And so that's the distance. If we want to find the angles then, let's think about it here. There's, there are a couple different ways we can, well there are infinitely many ways we can actually measure the angle. Okay. But one way we can do it is the modulus is the sine of the B times the arc cosine of the A over the norm, over the absolute value. And this works for any angle except for uh, the ones that are at, at pi. So this formula is going to mess up for the ones that are pi, the way I've got it set up. So if I, let, uh, so if I change this to zero, we're going to get an error here. Uh, Let's see here. So if I change that to zero and leave this negative, it's going to say. Uh, actually, that's that one's. That one is correct. So when we change this one to negative, and change this one to zero. So a negative real number, it's going to say that the angle is zero, but it's not. It's pi or 180 degrees. So that's going to be a, an error message. That, I mean, that's going to give you an incorrect answer in the way this thing is working. Um, so that's a glitch that I haven't worked out yet, but I may not be able to. Okay, but all the others work correctly. So anyway, that turns out to be... Uh, approximately negative 1.89 radians or negative 108 degrees. So we're measuring this way. Now, of course, that's not the only angle that it could be. There are infinitely many different angles that you can give for that, uh, for that point. So just like in polar coordinates or just like in rotational angles in general, any coterminal angle will also be an acceptable uh, something to say for the modulus. But... Uh, this is a way of picking the modulus so that it's always between um, negative pi and pi in radians, or negative 180 degrees and 180 degrees. Similarly, uh, the sine of b, sine of d, which will be 1 or negative 1, or 0, and then we have c over the, the uh, square root here of the uh, 5, which is the norm of w, 
So the arc cosine of that is going to be our angle, which is approximately 2.67795 radians, or about 153.43 degrees. So we're rotating around this way. So there you can see uh, that in, in uh, the grid, you can see the grid, the, if you want to put the grid on it, you can see that in X and Y coordinates, but we're also seeing it in uh, basically in polar coordinates as well. Okay, so in polar coordinates, this would be written as the square root of 5 times e to the power i times this angle. And this one would be square root of 10, which is the distance from the r, e to the i, and that is the, our direction angle there. Okay, we'll come back in the next uh, video and talk a little bit about working with these things in terms of performing some operations on these numbers.